Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Jesus forgave us of all sin, past, present, and even future sin. Andrew brought good news to me. I could understand the Bible more the way he taught it. Jesus forgave you one time, and that's for everything. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today's the end of my third week teaching on the war is over, and I've still got a long ways to go. I tell you, this is one of the most powerful things that the Lord has shown me. Uh, this explains the grace of God. It goes into the difference between the Old and the New Covenants, and it's just powerful stuff. Today, I want to deal with 1 John CHAPTER 1 AND VERSE 9. BUT LET ME JUST GO BACK FIRST OF ALL AND LAY THE FOUNDATION FOR THIS. I'VE BEEN TEACHING OUT OF HEBREWS CHAPTER 8, 9, AND 10, AND I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT THAT JESUS PAID FOR OUR SINS, ALL OF OUR SINS AT ONE TIME. HE PAID FOR THE SINS THAT WE'VE COMMITTED IN THE PAST, PRESENT SINS, AND EVEN FUTURE SINS HAVE ALL BEEN PAID FOR. AND THAT IS A RADICAL STATEMENT. I, have, I HAD NEVER HEARD ANOTHER PERSON SAY THIS IN MY LIFE WHEN THE LORD FIRST SHOWN THAT TO ME. NOW, I'VE GOT A COUPLE OF PEOPLE THAT I'VE HEARD PREACH THIS SINCE THAT TIME, AND THEY'VE COME UP AND TOLD ME THAT, YEAH, THEY KNEW THAT. BUT I MEAN, WHEN I SAW THIS, I'D NEVER HEARD ANOTHER PERSON ALIVE SAY THIS. AND YET, THAT'S WHAT HEBREWS CHAPTER 8, 9, AND 10 ARE SAYING VERY CLEARLY THAT HE ENTERED IN ONCE INTO THE HOLY PLACE, HAVING OBTAINED ETERNAL REDEMPTION FOR US. HEBREWS CHAPTER 9, VERSE 12. VERSE 15, HE OBTAINED ETERNAL INHERITANCE, NOT INHERITANCE TILL THE NEXT TIME WE SIN. AND THEN THE REST OF THAT NINTH CHAPTER JUST MAKES A CONTRAST BETWEEN THE OLD COVENANT WAY OF OFFERING SACRIFICES. EVERY TIME YOU SINNED, YOU HAD TO HAVE A NEW SACRIFICE. BUT IT CONTRASTS THAT WITH JESUS ENTERED IN ONCE AND PAID FOR ALL OF OUR SINS SO THAT WE SHOULD HAVE NO MORE SIN CONSCIOUSNESS. MAN, THAT IS HUGE. HEBREWS CHAPTER 10, VERSE 2. AND THEN DOWN TO VERSE 10, HEBREWS 10, 10, IT SAYS, WE ARE SANCTIFIED THROUGH THE OFFERING OF THE BODY OF JESUS CHRIST ONCE FOR ALL. AND THEN VERSE 14 SAYS, IF WE'VE BEEN SANCTIFIED, WE HAVE BEEN MADE PERFECT FOREVER. AND HEBREWS CHAPTER 12, VERSE 23, SAYS THAT THAT'S TALKING ABOUT THE SPIRITS OF JUST MAN BEEN MADE PERFECT. SO HERE'S WHAT I ENDED WITH YESTERDAY, THAT WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, IF YOU HAVE MADE JESUS YOUR LORD, YOU WERE FORGIVEN OF ALL SIN, PAST, PRESENT, AND EVEN FUTURE SIN. AND PEOPLE STRUGGLE BECAUSE THEY SAY, HOW COULD THAT BE? AND THEY GO LOOK IN THE MIRROR. IT'S NOT YOUR BODY THAT'S BEEN MADE SANCTIFIED AND PERFECTED FOREVER. IT'S NOT YOUR SOUL, YOUR MENTAL, EMOTIONAL PART, BUT YOUR SPIRIT HAS BEEN CLEANSED AND PURGED OF ALL SINS, PAST, PRESENT, AND EVEN THE SINS THAT YOU HAVEN'T COMMITTED YET. EPHESIANS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 24 SAYS, WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, YOU WERE CREATED IN RIGHTEOUSNESS AND TRUE HOLINESS. THAT'S TALKING ABOUT THAT BORN AGAIN SPIRIT ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. AND YOU WERE CREATED RIGHTEOUS AND HOLY. YOU AREN'T EARNING IT. YOU AREN'T GROWING INTO IT. YOU DON'T HAVE A LITTLE BABY SPIRIT THAT'S GROWING INTO THIS MATURE SPIRIT. YOUR SPIRIT WAS CREATED RIGHTEOUS AND TRULY HOLY. FIRST JOHN CHAPTER 4, VERSE 17, AS JESUS IS, SO ARE WE IN THIS WORLD. JESUS ISN'T A BABY SPIRIT THAT'S GROWING INTO MATURITY. HE IS MATURE, AND IN YOUR SPIRIT, YOU ARE IDENTICAL TO HIM. 1 CORINTHIANS 6, 17, HE THAT IS JOINED UNTO THE LORD IS ONE SPIRIT. AND THAT WORD ONE THERE MEANS A SINGULAR ONE TO THE EXCLUSION OF ANOTHER. WE AREN'T SIMILAR IN THE SENSE THAT HE'S UP HERE AND WE'RE DOWN HERE. NO, WE'RE IDENTICAL. IF THERE ARE SUCH THINGS IN THE SPIRIT AS MOLECULES AND ATOMS, YOU ARE MOLECULE FOR MOLECULE, ATOM FOR ATOM, IDENTICAL TO JESUS IN YOUR SPIRIT. YOU WERE BORN AGAIN, CREATED THAT WAY. AND THEN EPHESIANS 1.13, ONCE YOU BELIEVED, YOU WERE SEALED, VACUUM PACKED BY THE HOLY SPIRIT. YOUR SPIRIT IS NOW PROTECTED SO THAT WHEN A CHRISTIAN SINS, THAT SIN WILL ENTER INTO YOUR BODY AND IT'LL GIVE SATAN AN INROAD AGAINST YOU. IT SAYS THIS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 16, KNOW YE NOT THAT TO WHOM YE YIELD YOURSELVES, SERVANTS TO OBEY, HIS SERVANTS YE ARE, TO WHOM YE OBEY, WHETHER OF SIN UNTO DEATH 
or of obedience unto righteousness. If you yield to sin, you are yielding yourself to Satan, the one who authored that sin. This doesn't mean you lose your salvation, but it means that you are giving your body to the devil, and he will come to steal, kill, and to destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. Satan goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's 1 Peter chapter 5, I believe it's verse 8. Satan, if, he, if it was just up to him, he would devour every one of us. Every one of us would be dead. Every one of us would be sick. Every one of us would have poverty and on and on. But he has to have our cooperation. That's the reason he can't devour everybody. And how do you cooperate with him? Through sin. When you go out and yield yourself to sin, you're giving Satan a free shot against you in your body and in your soul. But your spirit, if you've been born again, is sealed, vacuum-packed, and Satan cannot get to your spirit. And you put that together with John chapter 4, verse 24. Jesus was speaking, and he says that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This isn't just the best way to do it. You must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You have to come before Him in spirit. So if you've been born again, your spirit was created righteous and truly holy, vacuum-packed, and even though you might have sin and failure in your life, God is a spirit. He's looking at you in the spirit, and your spirit retains its righteousness and holiness even though you have gone out and sinned. MAN, THAT IS PHENOMENAL. THAT TOOK ME DECADES TO FIGURE THESE THINGS OUT. BUT THAT IS LIBERATING. THAT'LL SET YOU FREE FROM GUILT AND SIN. BUT THERE'S ALWAYS THIS QUESTION THAT COMES UP. WELL, WHAT ABOUT 1 JOHN CHAPTER 1, VERSE 9? LET ME READ THIS TO YOU. IF WE CONFESS OUR SINS, HE IS FAITHFUL AND JUST TO FORGIVE US OUR SINS AND TO CLEANSE US FROM ALL UNRIGHTEOUSNESS. YOU KNOW, I COULD LITERALLY SPEND A LOT MORE TIME ON THIS THAN WHAT I HAVE TIME TO, BUT LET ME JUST SAY SOME THINGS REAL QUICKLY. FIRST OF ALL, YOU DO NOT HAVE TO CONFESS YOUR SINS IN ORDER TO GET BORN AGAIN. THAT IS OFTEN SAID, AND PEOPLE WILL SAY THAT, AND THEY SAY, YOU KNOW, YOU JUST CONFESS YOUR SINS. ASK JESUS TO FORGIVE YOU OF YOUR SINS. WHAT WOULD HAPPEN IF YOU FORGOT ONE? DOES THAT MEAN IT WASN'T COVERED? DOES THAT MEAN THAT YOU'RE ONLY PARTIALLY SAVED BECAUSE YOU DIDN'T MENTION ONE OF YOUR SINS? OF COURSE NOT. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT there, THIS IS THE ONLY INSTANCE IN SCRIPTURE, IN THE NEW TESTAMENT SCRIPTURE, WHERE IT TELLS US TO ASK FOR THE FORGIVENESS OF OUR SINS. NOW, I WILL ACKNOWLEDGE THIS. OVER IN JAMES CHAPTER 5, IT SAYS THAT IF ANYBODY'S SICK, LET HIM CALL FOR THE ELDERS OF THE CHURCH AND LET HIM ANOINT HIM WITH OIL AND PRAY OVER HIM, AND THE PRAYER OF FAITH WILL SAVE THE SICK. AND IF HE HATH COMMITTED ANY SINS, THEY SHALL BE FORGIVEN HIM. CONFESS YOUR FAULTS ONE TO ANOTHER AND PRAY ONE FOR ANOTHER THAT YOU MAY BE HEALED. SO IT DOES SAY THAT WE ARE con TO CONFESS OUR FAULTS, BUT THAT'S TO EACH OTHER IF WE'VE TRANSGRESSED, IF WE'VE GOT UNFORGIVENESS, IF WE'VE GOT AUGHT AGAINST THINGS, BECAUSE THOSE THINGS HINDER OUR PRAYERS AND STUFF. AND SO IT DOES TALK ABOUT THAT. BUT OUTSIDE OF THAT, THERE ISN'T ANY OTHER SCRIPTURE THAT SAYS YOU HAVE TO CONFESS YOUR SINS IN ORDER TO BE SAVED. THE CLASSIC VERSE THAT I USE A LOT IS ROMANS CHAPTER 10, VERSE 9. AND THAT VERSE SAYS THAT IF YOU WILL CONFESS WITH YOUR MOUTH THE LORD JESUS AND BELIEVE IN YOUR HEART THAT GOD RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD, YOU SHALL BE SAVED. IT DIDN'T EVEN MENTION CONFESSING YOUR SINS, MENTIONING YOUR SINS. NOW, I BELIEVE THAT YOU DO HAVE TO COME TO A PLACE WHERE YOU ACKNOWLEDGE THAT YOU HAVE SINNED AND THAT YOU'RE A SINNER AND THAT YOU NEED A SAVIOR, BECAUSE THE BIBLE SAYS, IN ROMANS CHAPTER 4, I BELIEVE IT'S VERSE 5, THAT HE CAME TO SAVE THE UNGODLY. UNLESS YOU ADMIT THAT YOU'RE UNGODLY, YOU CAN'T BE SAVED. SO YOU NEED TO HAVE AN ACKNOWLEDGEMENT, AN AWARENESS OF YOUR SIN SO THAT YOU WOULD TURN TO THE LORD FOR SALVATION. BUT THERE ISN'T SCRIPTURE THAT TELLS YOU TO CONFESS YOUR SINS EXCEPT THIS ONE RIGHT HERE. Uh, FOR INSTANCE, IF YOU GO TO ACTS CHAPTER 16, IN THE 16TH CHAPTER IS WHERE PAUL AND SILAS WERE THROWN INTO pray, prayer, uh, PRISON, AND AT MIDNIGHT THEY WERE PRAYING AND WORSHIPPING GOD, AND GOD SENT AN EARTHQUAKE. THE JAILER WAS GOING TO KILL HIMSELF, SUPPOSING THAT ALL OF THE PRISONERS HAD ESCAPED, BUT uh, PAUL CRIED OUT WITH A LOUD VOICE AND SAYS, DON'T DO YOURSELF ANY HARM. AND when the, pris WHEN THE JAILER CAME IN AND SAW THAT ALL OF THE PRISON DOORS WERE OPEN, BUT NONE OF THE PRISONERS HAD LEFT, HE WAS SO AMAZED 
AT THE POWER OF GOD THAT HE FELL DOWN AND HE SAID, SIRS, WHAT MUST I DO TO BE SAVED? AND THEY DID NOT SAY, PRAY AND CONFESS YOUR SINS AND ASK JESUS TO FORGIVE YOUR SINS. NO, THEY SAID, BELIEVE ON THE LORD JESUS CHRIST AND YOU SHALL BE SAVED AND YOUR HOUSE. BELIEVE WHAT? BELIEVE THAT JESUS CAME AND BORE YOUR SINS. BUT YOU DON'T HAVE TO CONFESS YOUR SINS. AGAIN, IF CONFESSING YOUR SINS WAS A PART OF SALVATION, THEN WHAT WOULD HAPPEN IF ONE OF YOUR SINS WAS was NOT CONFESSED? WOULD THAT MEAN THAT YOU AREN'T FULLY SAVED? AND HERE'S ANOTHER THING. I HADN'T GOT TIME TO GO INTO GREAT DETAIL ON THIS, BUT IN THE BOOK OF ROMANS, THE WORDS THAT ARE USED, the, THE GREEK WORDS THAT ARE USED ARE NOUNS WHEN IT TALKS ABOUT SIN. IT'S A NOUN, NOT A VERB. NOW, THE SIGNIFICANCE OF THIS IS THAT A VERB IS SOMETHING YOU DO. A NOUN IS SOMETHING YOU ARE. A NOUN DESCRIBES A PERSON, A PLACE, OR A THING, BUT A VERB DESCRIBES AN ACTION OF A PERSON, PLACE, OR THING. SO THE WORDS THAT ARE USED IN THE BOOK OF ROMANS WHEN IT TALKS ABOUT SIN, THAT OUR SIN HAS BEEN FORGIVEN, IT'S NOT SINS, PLURAL. IT IS SIN, SINGULAR. IT IS REFERRING NOT TO THE ACTIONS YOU DO, BUT THAT OLD SIN NATURE. AND WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, IT'S NOT YOUR INDIVIDUAL SINS THAT ARE BEING TAKEN CARE OF. NOW, ALTHOUGH THAT IS TRUE, THAT THEY ARE TAKEN CARE OF, IT'S YOUR SIN NATURE, AND IT'S LIKE YOUR SIN NATURE IS WHAT CAUSED ALL OF THESE OTHER SINS. YOUR SIN NATURE IS THE CORE, AND WHEN YOU GET THE CORE, THEN EVERYTHING THAT'S ATTACHED TO IT GOES WITH IT. WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, GOD TAKES THE SIN NATURE OUT OF YOU AND ALL OF THE SINS THAT THAT SIN NATURE PRODUCED, AND IT'S GONE. BUT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT IF WE CONFESS OUR SINS, PLURAL. THIS ISN'T A NOUN. THIS ISN'T TALKING ABOUT CONFESSING THAT YOU ARE A SINNER AND THAT YOU NEED SALVATION. THIS IS TALKING TO PEOPLE AFTER YOU ARE BORN AGAIN. LET ME READ THIS VERSE TO YOU, THE VERSE IN FRONT OF IT, IN VERSE 8, IT SAYS, IF WE SAY THAT WE HAVE NO SIN, WE DECEIVE OURSELVES AND THE TRUTH IS NOT IN US. THE VERSE AFTER IT, VERSE 10, IF WE SAY THAT WE HAVE NOT SINNED, WE MAKE HIM A LIAR AND HIS WORD IS NOT IN US. SO THIS IS DEFINITELY TALKING ABOUT PEOPLE SINNING, BUT THEN IN CHAPTER 2, VERSE 1, MY LITTLE CHILDREN, THESE THINGS HAVE I WRITTEN UNTO YOU THAT YOU SIN NOT. HE WAS WRITING TO CHRISTIANS. THIS ISN'T TALKING ABOUT GETTING BORN AGAIN. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT AFTER YOU'RE BORN AGAIN, YOUR SINS HAVE BEEN FORGIVEN, PAST, PRESENT, AND FUTURE. YOUR SPIRIT WAS CREATED IN RIGHTEOUSNESS AND HOLINESS, AND THEN IT WAS VACUUM PACKED SO THAT WHEN YOU AS A CHRISTIAN SIN, THAT SIN WILL ENTER INTO YOUR BODY AND INTO YOUR SOUL AND GIVE SATAN AN OPPORTUNITY AGAINST YOU. SO QUIT SINNING. AND IF YOU DO SIN, WHAT DO YOU, HOW DO YOU DEAL WITH THAT? IT SAYS AGAIN IN ROMANS 6, 16, KNOW YE NOT THAT TO WHOM YE YIELD YOURSELVES, SERVANTS TO OBEY, HIS SERVANTS YE ARE TO WHOM YE OBEY, WHETHER OF SIN UNTO DEATH OR OF OBEDIENCE UNTO RIGHTEOUSNESS. WHEN YOU YIELD TO SIN, YOU ARE YIELDING TO SATAN, THE AUTHOR OF THAT SIN. AND HE HAS A LEGAL RIGHT TO COME IN, NOT INTO YOUR SPIRIT, BECAUSE IT'S BEEN SANCTIFIED AND PERFECTED FOREVER. IT'S SEALED BY THE HOLY SPIRIT. YOUR SIN DOESN'T PENETRATE THAT SEAL. SO YOUR SPIRIT, THE CORE OF YOU, THE REAL YOU, IS STILL IN RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD BECAUSE HE'S A SPIRIT AND HE'S RELATING TO YOU SPIRIT TO SPIRIT. BUT WHEN YOU GO SIN AS A CHRISTIAN, YOU HAVE JUST GIVEN SATAN INROAD INTO YOUR PHYSICAL BODY AND INTO YOUR SOULISH REALM, YOUR MENTAL, EMOTIONAL PART. AND HE NOW HAS RIGHTS. HE NOW HAS A LEGAL RIGHT TO PUT SICKNESS IN YOUR BODY, TO PUT DEPRESSION UPON YOU, TO TAKE YOUR FINANCES FROM YOU, AND TO DO THINGS, BECAUSE YOU'VE YIELDED TO HIM. AND IT SAYS THAT YOU, you GIVE YOURSELF, you, HIS SERVANT YOU BECOME. IT DOESN'T MEAN THAT YOU LOSE YOUR SALVATION, BUT IT MEANS HE'S NOW DOMINATING, CONTROLLING YOUR BODY BECAUSE YOU YIELDED TO HIM. SO IF YOU FIND YOURSELF IN THAT SITUATION, YOUR SPIRIT IS STILL BORN AGAIN. YOUR SPIRIT HAS BEEN FORGIVEN OF ALL SIN, PAST, PRESENT, AND FUTURE. There's a, uh, YOU'RE SEALED BY THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND THAT SIN DIDN'T CONTAMINATE YOUR SPIRIT, AND YOU CAN STILL WORSHIP GOD IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. BUT DO YOU WANT TO JUST uh, GIVE SATAN FREE ACCESS TO YOUR BODY AND HAVE HIM uh, COME IN AND DESTROY YOU AND DO ALL OF THESE THINGS? NO. SO IF YOU'VE DONE THAT, HOW DO YOU GET RID OF THAT? YOU DO WHAT 1 JOHN 1, 9. YOU CONFESS YOUR SINS. 
The word confess here, it doesn't mean that you go to somebody with their collar turned around backwards and you admit all of these things. The word confess means to say the same thing. In other words, if you are a born-again Christian, if you were truly saved, AND GOD'S WORD TELLS YOU NOT TO BE, YOU KNOW, NOT TO GO COMMIT A SEXUAL SIN OR NOT TO LIE OR NOT TO GOSSIP OR NOT TO STEAL OR ALL OF THE THINGS THAT IT TELLS US NOT TO DO. AND IF YOU AS A BORN AGAIN CHRISTIAN WENT AHEAD AND DID IT ANYWAY, THEN WHAT YOU WERE DOING WAS SAYING, GOD, I DON'T AGREE WITH YOU. I'M GOING TO DO THIS ANYWAY. I DON'T THINK IT'S THAT BAD. BUT YOU GO AHEAD AND YOU LEAN UNDER YOUR OWN UNDERSTANDING, AND THEN AFTER THAT DOESN'T WORK, AND AFTER SATAN BEGINS TO EXACT HIS TOLL, AND YOU BEGIN TO SUFFER MENTALLY, EMOTIONALLY, PHYSICALLY, AND YOU REALIZE, GOD, I OPENED UP A DOOR TO THE DEVIL. I GAVE SATAN INROAD INTO MY LIFE. HOW DO YOU GET HIM OUT? YOU CONFESS IT. YOU AGREE AND SAY, GOD, I THOUGHT MY WAY WAS BETTER, BUT YOUR WAY WAS BETTER. I NOW AGREE WITH YOU. I SAY THE SAME THING. I CONFESS MY SIN, AND I BELIEVE THAT THE FORGIVENESS THAT IS ALREADY IN MY SPIRIT, THIS BORN-AGAIN PART OF ME, NOW FLOODS OUT. I NOW PUT MY BODY UNDER THE CONTROL OF YOU INSTEAD OF UNDER THE CONTROL OF THE DEVIL. I AM TURNING FROM HIM. YOU KNOW, THE WORD REPENT MEANS TO TURN AND GO THE OTHER DIRECTION. AND WE'VE, us, we've ATTACHED TO IT ALL KINDS OF OTHER THINGS THAT YOU HAVE TO CRY, THAT YOU HAVE TO BE ON YOUR KNEES. I'VE LITERALLY MET PEOPLE BEFORE THAT IN THE uh, CATHOLIC RELIGION DOWN IN MEXICO, THEY ACTUALLY CRAWLED OVER THREE MILES OVER BROKEN GLASS AND GOT SCARS ON THEIR HANDS, THEIR ELBOWS, AND THEIR KNEES FROM DOING THIS. AND THEY WERE DOING PENANCE. THEY THOUGHT THAT WAS REPENTANCE. NO, THAT IS... THAT'S AN OFFENSE TO GOD BECAUSE YOU ARE SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER TRYING TO PAY FOR YOUR SINS. NO, WE'VE ATTACHED SO MANY THINGS TO THE WORD REPENTANCE THAT THE BIBLE DOESN'T MEAN. IT JUST MEANS TO CHANGE YOUR MIND, TO GO IN THE OPPOSITE DIRECTION. SO YOU WERE GOING IN THIS DIRECTION, FOLLOWING THE DEVIL, DOING WHAT HE WANTED YOU TO. NOW YOU REALIZE YOU'RE WRONG, SO YOU SAY, FATHER, I CONFESS THIS AS SIN. I DID THE WRONG THING. AND PRAISE GOD, I'M STILL RIGHTEOUS, I'M STILL HOLY, I'M STILL PURE IN MY SPIRIT. HEBREWS CHAPTER 10, VERSES 10 AND 14, I'M SANCTIFIED AND PERFECTED FOREVER IN MY SPIRIT. I HAVEN'T LOST MY RIGHT STANDING WITH YOU, BUT BOY, I WAS DUMB. I GAVE SATAN INROAD INTO MY LIFE. NOW I'VE GOT SICKNESS, NOW I'VE GOT PAIN, I'VE GOT DEPRESSION, POVERTY, PROBLEMS. SO, FATHER, I'M SORRY, AND I CONFESS IT AS SIN, AND I, I RECEIVE THIS FORGIVENESS THAT'S ALREADY IN MY SPIRIT. I NOW RECEIVE IT COMING OUT THROUGH MY MIND AND THROUGH MY BODY. AND WHEN YOU DO THAT, YOU ARE NO LONGER SUBMITTED TO THE DEVIL, AND YOU JUST CLOSE THE DOOR ON THE DEVIL, AND HE DOESN'T HAVE THE RIGHT TO AFFLICT YOU ANYMORE BECAUSE YOU CONFESSED IT AS SIN AND TURNED FROM IT. IT DOESN'T HAVE ANYTHING TO DO WITH YOUR ETERNAL SALVATION. AND IF YOU'RE JUST TUNING IN TODAY, AND IF YOU'VE MISSED THE OTHER THINGS THAT I'VE SAID, THAT'S THE REASON you, YOU MUST GET THIS BOOK. YOU MUST GET THIS TEACHING BECAUSE I'VE VERIFIED ALL OF THESE THINGS. HEBREWS CHAPTER 9, VERSE 12 SAYS, JESUS ENTERED IN ONCE INTO THE HOLY PLACE AND OBTAINED ETERNAL REDEMPTION FOR YOU, NOT REDEMPTION TILL THE NEXT TIME YOU SIN. WHEN YOU OPERATE IN 1 JOHN 1, 9, YOU ARE NOT ASKING FOR THE BORN AGAIN EXPERIENCE. HE WAS WRITING THIS TO CHRISTIANS, PEOPLE WHO WERE ALREADY SAVED, AND HE WAS TELLING THEM AFTER THEY HAVE BEEN BORN AGAIN, BUT THEY WENT OUT AND YIELDED TO THE DEVIL THROUGH SOME KIND OF SIN, HOW DO YOU EXTRACT YOURSELF FROM THE DOMINION THAT THE DEVIL IS HAVING OVER YOU? YOU CONFESS IT AS SIN, NOT FOR THE PURPOSE OF BEING BORN AGAIN. THIS DOESN'T HAVE ANYTHING TO DO WITH YOUR ETERNAL REDEMPTION. IT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT YOUR SPIRIT MAN. IT'S TALKING ABOUT YOUR PHYSICAL BODY AND YOUR SOUL, AND YOU CONFESS IT AS SIN, AND THEN THAT FORGIVENESS THAT'S ALREADY THERE ETERNALLY IN YOUR SPIRIT, IT WILL FLOW OUT THROUGH YOUR SOUL AND THROUGH YOUR BODY, AND IT WILL RID YOU OF SATAN AND THE THINGS THAT HE'S TRYING TO DO IN YOUR LIFE. AND SO WE NEED THAT. WE NEED A WAY TO DEAL WITH IT. BUT THIS VERSE HAS BEEN INTERPRETED. THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN BELIEVES THAT EVERY TIME THEY SIN, THEY HAVE TO CONFESS THAT SIN AND GO TO GOD AND PUT IT UNDER THE BLOOD. YOUR SPIRIT HAS BEEN SANCTIFIED AND PERFECTED FOREVER. YOUR ETERNAL re RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD IS NOT AFFECTED BY YOUR ACTIONS. 
IT'S ONLY AFFECTED BY YOUR FAITH IN JESUS. AND IF YOU PUT FAITH IN JESUS, YOU GET BORN AGAIN, AND THAT IS ETERNAL, AND IT'S LASTING. YOU KNOW, I HATE TO EVEN MENTION THIS. I'M NOT GOING TO BE ABLE TO EXPLAIN IT TODAY. IF YOU'LL GET THIS TEACHING, IT WILL GO INTO MORE DETAIL. BUT YOU DO NOT LOSE YOUR SALVATION BECAUSE OF SIN. IF YOU COULD, THEN WHICH SIN IS IT THAT WOULD CAUSE YOU TO LOSE IT? WELL, YOU HAVE TO START CATEGORIZING SIN AND SAYING THERE'S SOME SINS THAT ARE ACCEPTABLE AND THERE'S OTHER SINS THAT ARE UNACCEPTABLE. THAT'S NOT WHAT THE BIBLE TEACHES. JAMES CHAPTER 2, VERSE 10 SAYS, IF YOU KEEP THE WHOLE LAW AND YET OFFEND IN ONE POINT, YOU BECOME GUILTY OF ALL. SO IF YOU BELIEVE THAT YOU COULD LOSE YOUR SALVATION BECAUSE OF SOME TERRIBLE SIN, THEN THAT WOULD ALSO MEAN THAT YOU LOSE YOUR SALVATION BECAUSE OF SOME LITTLE SIN. THAT'S NOT TRUE. YOU DO NOT LOSE YOUR SALVATION BECAUSE OF SIN. YOU CAN'T LOSE, QUOTE, UNQUOTE, YOUR SALVATION, LIKE YOU LOSE YOUR KEYS OR YOU LOSE YOUR GLASSES. YOU DIDN'T WANT TO. YOU JUST FORGOT WHERE YOU PUT THEM. NO, YOU CAN RENOUNCE YOUR SALVATION. AND I DON'T HAVE TIME TO GO INTO THIS, BUT HEBREWS CHAPTER 10, THOSE VERY VERSES WHERE WE WERE READING ABOUT THAT YOU ARE SANCTIFIED AND PERFECTED FOREVER, IT GOES ON AND TALKS ABOUT HOW MUCH SORE PUNISHMENT SHALL THOSE BE THOUGHT WORTHY WHO HAVE COUNTED THE BLOOD OF THE COVENANT WHEREWITH HE WAS SANCTIFIED AN UNHOLY THING AND HATH TRODDEN UNDERFOOT THE SON OF GOD AND HATH DONE DESPITE UNTO THE SPIRIT OF GRACE. THAT IS NOT TALKING ABOUT JUST SINNING. THAT IS TALKING ABOUT TOTAL REJECTION. GOD DIDN'T FORCE YOU TO GET SAVED. HE DOESN'T FORCE YOU TO be, STAY SAVED. YOU CAN RENOUNCE YOUR SALVATION ONE TIME. AND HEBREWS CHAPTER 6 SAYS, IF YOU EVER DO IT, IT'S IMPOSSIBLE TO EVER BE RENEWED UNDER REPENTANCE. YOU CAN RENOUNCE IT ONE TIME AND BECOME REPROBATE, BUT THERE ISN'T ANY SUCH THING AS BEING BORN AGAIN AGAIN. YOU DON'T LOSE YOUR SALVATION. YOU DON'T SEND IT AWAY. YOUR SALVATION IS SECURE AS LONG AS YOU WANT TO BE SECURE, AS LONG AS YOU LOVE GOD. BUT, AND AGAIN, HEBREWS CHAPTER 6 PUTS SOME QUALIFICATIONS ON THIS. THERE'S FIVE THINGS THAT ARE MENTIONED THERE. YOU HAVE TO BE BASICALLY A MATURE CHRISTIAN, AND ONLY A MATURE CHRISTIAN CAN RENOUNCE THEIR FAITH. AN IMMATURE CHRISTIAN CANNOT DO IT. LET ME SAY THIS TO ANYBODY WHO'S LISTENING TO ME AND SAYING, WELL, MAN, I THINK I MIGHT BE GUILTY. I, I WAS BORN AGAIN, BUT I GOT DISCOURAGED AND I JUST WALKED AWAY AND SAID, GOD, FORGET IT. I DON'T WANT ANYTHING TO DO WITH YOU. AND IF YOU ARE STRUGGLING AND, and SAYING, THIS IS TERRIBLE NEWS, AM I REPROBATE? I CAN TELL YOU NO, BECAUSE WHEN YOU BECOME REPROBATE, ROMANS CHAPTER 1 MEANS IT SAYS IT TAKES, GOD TAKES ALL CONVICTION, ALL KNOWLEDGE OF GOD AWAY FROM YOU. A PERSON WHO IS REPROBATE KNOWS THEY'RE GOING TO HELL AND THEY'RE GLAD OF IT. THAT'S HOW MUCH THEY HATE GOD. IF YOU ARE SORRY OVER THINGS THAT YOU'VE DONE, AND IF YOU ARE REPENTING AND SAYING, OH, GOD, I DON'T WANT TO LOSE MY RELATIONSHIP WITH YOU, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, YOU AREN'T REPROBATE REGARDLESS OF WHAT YOU'VE DONE. IF YOU WERE REPROBATE, YOU WOULDN'T CARE. YOU CAN ONLY COME TO THE LORD WHEN HE DRAWS YOU. YOU CAN'T COME ON YOUR OWN. JOHN CHAPTER 6, VERSE 44. SO ANYWAY, THERE'S SO MANY MORE THINGS I'D LIKE TO SAY. AGAIN, I'D LIKE TO SAY THAT THIS BOOK WILL ANSWER THIS IN GREATER DETAIL THAN WHAT I'VE DONE. I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THIS THIS IS A LIFE CHANGER. I REALLY BELIEVE THAT. SO LISTEN TO OUR announcer. HE'S GOING TO GIVE YOU THIS INFORMATION. I NOT ONLY HAVE THIS BOOK IN ENGLISH, I HAVE IT IN SPANISH, AND THEN I HAVE THESE STUDY GUIDES. AND THESE STUDY GUIDES ARE THE SAME THING AS THE BOOK, BUT THEY'RE REFORMATTED SO THAT YOU CAN DISCIPLE OTHER PEOPLE TO TEACH A BIBLE STUDY. IT'S REALLY A GREAT WAY OF TRAINING OTHER PEOPLE. AND THEN WE ALSO HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S THAT WILL COVER THIS. AND I PROMISE YOU, THIS WILL TRANSFORM YOUR LIFE. I, IF THIS DOESN'T LIGHT YOUR FIRE, YOUR WOOD IS WET. LISTEN TO THE ANNOUNCER AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. IF YOU'RE A MINISTER, EXPERIENCE THE DYNAMIC AND LIFE-CHANGING ORGANIZATION WHICH IS NOW AVAILABLE TO YOU, ARMY. I'VE FOUND THAT I'M NOT ALONE. THERE'S A WHOLE ARMY OF FOLKS WHO BELIEVE THE SAME WAY THAT I DO. ARMY IS ABOUT RECEIVING THE LOVE AND GRACE MESSAGE TAUGHT BY ANDREW WOMACK. IT PROVIDES YOU WITH INTERACTIVE WEBINARS, REGIONAL CONFERENCES WITH WORLD-RENOWNED SPEAKERS, AND PRACTICAL WORKSHOPS ON RELEVANT TOPICS. IT IS SHOWING UP IN EVERY MESSAGE WE PREACH IN OUR CHURCH, EVERY MESSAGE WE MINISTER, EVERY TIME WE PRAY FOR SOMEONE. ARMY IS ALSO ABOUT RECEIVING TRAINING THROUGH ANDREW WOMACK'S CONTINUING EDUCATION FOR MINISTERS PROGRAM, MADE AVAILABLE THROUGH Caris BIBLE COLLEGE. AND IT HELPS a young pastor like myself in smaller ministries to, to connect with larger ministries that have 
experience a lot more and have so much more to offer. Get connected with Army today. I'd like to invite you to come to our campus days. We'll have all of our instructors ministering. We will have fellowship time together. There'll be questions and answers. And it's an opportunity for you to just come check out not only the spiritual things, but the facilities here. We have one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. If you can't relate to God and find God through the surroundings, then the word that we share will definitely bring you to another level. It'll be an awesome time right here in Woodland Park. We hope you were blessed by today's episode of The Gospel Truth. Andrew and Jamie wish to share their sincere gratitude for all the grace partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your generous partnership enables us to take the gospel, the nearly too good to be true news, to the ends of the earth. May God richly bless you for your faithfulness. If you're not already partnering with Andrew Womack Ministries, we encourage you to join us in this great harvest today. I'd really like to encourage you to get this material. This book on the war is over is available in English and in Spanish. And then I have a study guide that is also in English and in Spanish. This is primarily for discipleship. It's a tremendous tool that has a CD-ROM inside where you can print out the questions and disciple others. And then I have CDs and DVDs. I tell you, this teaching would change your life. Listen to our announcer and respond today. Andrew's teaching titled, The War Is Over, is available in a CD album recorded live from a Gospel Truth seminar or in a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. You can also get this teaching as a book or study guide in either English or Spanish. Or you can get the War Is Over package, which includes your choice of either the CD or DVD album, the book, and the study guide. This package has a catalog value of $85, but you can get it today for only $60. The individual audio CD highlighted in today's broadcast is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. This is the last day we'll be offering this teaching, so be sure to respond today. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. If the lines are busy, remember, you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awmi.net. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I'd like to encourage you to check out our inside story on our website. This is where we interview people behind the scenes, tell you about things going on with Karis Bible College, Andrew Womack Ministries. We interview people. We talk about outreaches that we have. We have nearly three years worth of inside stories archived there. We put out a new one every month. Go check it out at awmi.net and then check on the inside story. It'll be a blessing to you.